Hey everyone, welcome to Ren 11, the Porsche inspired all cooled lifestyle hub. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on running your Porsche in the winter. Now for many people, their Porsche is their second car, but what if it's your main vehicle? What if it's your daily driver? Now where does that leave you when wanting to run your car daily? And let's be honest, it's not just a daily driver. It is a jack of all trades. It's your performance car for the weekend. It's your fun car. It could even be your track day special, but you need to use it during these months. Today, we're gonna to be going to Porsche specialist Raichu, based in Oxfordshire, to talk about the steps you need to take to ensure that your Porsche runs brilliantly during winter. So we're gonna be taking my 996 over to Right Tune and they're gonna give it the once over and use that to give pointers. They've also got a great air-cooled car in the workshop that we'll be able to look at too to see some of the differences between both. Now currently the temperature is about minus two degrees this morning, which means it's very cold. So what I'm gonna do is get into my car, which is in my garage, and I'm gonna drive now to Right Tune. I think that's a good shout, isn't it? Rightune, who are based in Wallingford, Oxfordshire, have been operating as a Porsche specialist for the past 20 plus years. Not only do they cover servicing and diagnostic work on air and water-cooled motors, they also provide full engine building services for everything air-cooled. As soon as I arrived on site, Chris wasted no time in getting my car up on the ramp. So Chris managed to put my car up on the ramp and it was a bit of a challenge because apparently it's too low. Is it the lowest 996 you've had for a while? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So what Chris is going to go through with us now are some tips and some points to remember when you're preparing your car and not just for the winter but all year round as well, is that correct? These are like more based around the winter but it's difficult to say specifically you want to be looking at this just in the winter, you want to be making sure your car's safe all year round but there's certain things, particularly about the British winter with all the salt that goes on the roads and that it can get cold, um, that we want to be looking at. Things like tyres, your coolant, your battery and then some other like things that might get attacked slightly more that maybe have been already damaged by corrosion and the, that one more winter might just finish them off. Things like brake pipes, maybe some of the clips that go on the water pipes. Uh, leaves that we get in the countryside in uh, the UK get picked up by the front of things like 996 onwards. The drains, the drains which uh, get rid of all like the water and if they get blocked by the leaves then you can end up with water inside the car, which is not good. And also, unfortunately, some of the electronic devices, uh, depending on which model you've got, on well, a 996 speed alarm control module, is at the lowest point on the vehicle inside the car, which is on yours underneath the passenger seat. So as soon as it gets wet, that tends to get damaged. So first thing is tires. And this is something that's not just Porsche related, really, is it? No, I think uh, everybody in the winter should uh, you think about winter tyres, there's a, there's a good uh, podcast actually on Road to Redline where they interview somebody who's from a tyre company and that's very interesting, you should give it a listen. Your tyres is what keeps you on the road, the amount of like, performance upgrades you can do to suspension and things give you more grip at the end of the day, that's the only thing that's keeping you on the road. So I think if it's under like 7 degrees, you're going to want to be thinking about winter tyres. We all say this and none of us do it. I haven't put any on, you haven't put any on. Yep. So <laughs> Guilty as charged. But it would be something, you know, you might think oh, I've got four wheel drive so I've got more grip. Well, that's not going to stop you braking. It's not going to help you braking, is it really? You want as much grip as possible. So I would say, I'd recommend investing a, probably a second set of wheels so you're not changing. Maybe you get a cheaper set and just, you can put the winter tires on and you just got to store your summer tires uh, and wheels. Um, but yeah, I would, I, would, I would recommend, and that's also something, something you need to be looking at is your tyres, the health of the tyre, and also your tyre pressure, because in the winter when it's cooler, um, obviously your pressure's going to drop slightly, and then you're not going to be running as well as you should, so always check your tyre pressure, especially when it starts getting cooler. You can see quite a significant drop in pressure, which might make the difference between you like, losing 
control of staying on the road. Oh, completely. What's the next one? We were talking well, about just quickly, like we've got clips here that are holding your rubber hoses, your water coolant hoses on. Um, they don't give too much trouble usually, but yours are a little bit crude. I wouldn't be concerned, but this winter, if you're driving the car, the salt on the roads, that could, you know, make them not have the nip that they have and uh, then you've got a coolant leak so it's worth just checking them over but most of the time they're okay um, but yeah towards this area of the car no nothing more than i would be looking for in the summer i would suggest maybe checking your brake pipes if they are corroded but your mot and your regular servicing should pick that up so i wouldn't be majorly concerned about that chris talk to us about coolant yeah, so one of the things I would want to check when the, when the winter time's coming and when the temperature's dropping is check the specific gravity of the coolant, take it to a normal garage or to us. That's just to make sure the efficiency of the coolant's working as it should be when it gets below zero. Um, you don't want you know, it freezing or anything like that. Most of the time it's going to be fine. Long life coolant that we've got now is pretty good, but you need to be careful. Your system, I mean, in, a, in something like this, it can't... Off the top of my head, I don't know, but about 22 litres of coolant, something like that. So it's a big system, obviously the rads are in the front, it's running all the way to the back here. Um, this cap, I've noticed it's an 01, Porsche have superseded this four times, so we're now on 04. And there is really? Some, yeah, there's some residual, you can see a tiny leak, I mean, it may, may not be, it may be from where someone's filled it up, but I'd want to have that cap tested. Now, if you're going to test, have this off and say, say you're cooling at home, you're checking at home and the coolant's a bit too low, don't take this off when it's warm. It's going to blow all the coolant out, a lot of coolant out, and burn you maybe. And you're going to have a nightmare getting it back in there. A bit difficult to bleed. But it's okay if it's obviously make sure the car's dead flat, cold, like you haven't run it for at least a day, and take the cap off and top out. Make sure you're not mixing coolants. Typically, we find here that it's the red type coolant. Like general stuff like check your oil level, but that's an all year round thing. Make sure you've got, you know correct level in between the min and max I was trying to keep to the max on the you know on your model first thing in the morning you can do it on the dash so just I before driving any of these cars I always just turn the ignition on and just check it before I drive off if you're worried you just check luckily on the 996 still has a dipstick which they phased out in later models but you can check the dipstick dipstick can never lie electronic can but I wouldn't say anything else more other than normal around the side of the car no cool front of the car we're gonna to touch upon leaves yeah so basically in winter in the UK and I'm sure in other countries as well um, you've got all the leaves falling off haven't you in autumn or fall and this acts like a big hoover this part of the car so it can happen all year round but with the autumn and the winter time being the worst of the leaves on the road gets in here it can block the condensers and the uh, rads obviously affecting like the coolant um, the cooling properties of the car rather and worst case scenario they're in there for a long time they start to compost they get in between the condenser is in front of the radiator on the 996 and most of these later cars and it gets in between them and it rots and it damages your condensers and your radiators causing you to have problems obviously with your AC and your cooling, which is no good. So I'd always check, this is something you can check at home. Be careful that you don't, when you get in there with a hoover, but you know, be careful with the attachment. I just suggest using a plastic attachment. Get in there and hoover it out, but you don't want to jam it right into the condenser on the radiator because you could indeed also damage them as well. But it's something you should do regularly. Maybe when you wash the car, you know, it's a good idea to do it. How challenging is it to, for someone at home with a limited set of tools to perhaps remove the front bumper? Because I'm sure a lot of our viewers have, have heard of people being able just to remove the front bumper to actually get to you, those. You can, but if you, if, you, right. if you clean this out regularly, you won't need to take the bumper off. You can take it off at home, but on your driveway, in reality, in the winter, in the cold, not that pleasant. No. And if you don't need to, I, I would be, for, for myself, you know, little and often's best. Regularly hoover these up. You won't, there's no need to take the bumper off them. We've 
We've got into the front now and Chris has gained access to not only the screen wash but also the drains and the battery. Um, tell us some things whilst we're here. Yeah, so let's go back to what we just spoke about, which was the leaf issue and the, it hoovering it up in the, uh, in the rad and condenser area. The leaves can also get down into here, even though that there is a plastic cover covering it, somehow they get in there. Um, there's a couple of drains, two there, two there. Yours had an aftermarket system holding the cover on, but typically it's a 25 Torx. Can get a bit crowded in there. You just, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're struggling to get in, just give a little bit of tension underneath the, the cover itself, like this, or oh, that one's loose anyway, but. Uh, <laughs> so, you just give it a little bit and then it should pop up. So yeah, just make sure that they're clear. Uh, hoover it out or pull it out with something like a screwdriver. Be careful because there are bits of loom and AC pipes and things in there. Is it more prevalent with people that leave their cars out on driveways rather than garage vehicles? Yeah, exactly. And like the worst ones typically we would see, obviously, somebody parks it under a tree, gets full up with seeds. Um, so yeah, you, you need to just make sure it's clear. Once you've once you cleared it out, pour, I, I usually get a cup or something if I'm concerned that it may be blocked, a little bit of water, pour it in there and check underneath the car that's running out. Obviously, if you think it may be blocked, don't pour loads of water in there because then it's going to run into the car. Yeah. And as I said earlier, on this model, it tends to fill the carpet, the foam under the carpet. The carpet's actually got like a bit of sound deadening foam underneath. It's like this thick in places. So it absorbs a lot of water before you realize it's getting very wet inside the car. And then it can, uh, the water gets usually into the alarm control unit, which is underneath the passenger seat in the right hand drive 996. So that's a, that's a drama, so you don't want to happen. Um, so, yeah, and then also in this area, you've got your battery. Um, on these later Porsches, a good battery, if you're not going to use the car, which I know a lot of you don't over the winter two to three weeks and it'll be flat causing you issues like the alarm going off but also usually the release is electric and you can't get to the battery sure. and you can't get in there so it's a nightmare so you want to keep it on a trickle charger something like a c-tech something like that um, if you want to check your ha battery health either get your garage to do it or if you're you know that way minded you can use an AVA or something to, to check your battery health that's pretty critical if you can have a problem with the battery usually going to be in the winter then your other thing is your screen wash you want to make sure that obviously you've got something in there to stop your screen wash freezing the one thing to note is that if you've previously had it serviced at porsche or used the porsche screen wash additive we found that with some aftermarket products if it if you mix it they can congeal and block up the system so the hoses and the jets nozzles etc so if you are going to change to a different product like we either, we use a worse product you want to make sure that it's well flushed through with lots of like fresh water so if in doubt and you think it's got poor stuff in there I'd continue to use the poor stuff because you could end up with what's a very simple job of just like filling up your screen screen wash you could end up with uh, block pipes and stuff you need to replace everything which again is another yeah cost. replace it or clean it out but it's just yeah it's unnecessary cool. but yeah I, it's not it's not a common but we have had that issue before should we have a look at an air cool let's car? have a look just yeah look at some look. extras yeah cool <laughs> so we've moved across underneath this 70s G body SC. Now it's going to be very similar to the majority of air cooled cars with the things that we want to point out to you. Chris, take us through some of the things extra on an air cooled that people should be prepared to look for. No problem, Sean. Right, so if you're going to run one of these cars in the winter, they suffer, the bodywork and the chassis suffer a lot more from corrosion than uh, the later cars do. So it's you know, critical that they're protected, particularly like use typically something like wax oil, or we use sometimes like a Dynatrol product. Um, cover your cover your under under uh, cover your running gear rather. Cover brake, inspect the brake pipes. You don't want to be spraying stuff on that's already onto bits that have already been corroded because it's almost like locking in the corrosion. It's going to be pointless. So you need to you need to treat that. But typically, you want to make sure. And like particularly in this area of the car, this one doesn't have any outer seals, but they get, they get a lot of like dirt and salt and stuff gets 
shoved up in there and you get a lot of corrosion in this area down the sills, in and out of sills on these earlier cars. Next point would be, I mean, I can show you here, but there's other bits, but there's a, there's some like heater flaps here. You, that's all to do with obviously you've got to get the heat from the heat exchangers, from the engine all the way down to the front. A, to keep you warm and B, to clear the screen. You want to make sure that the heating's working, otherwise you're not going to be able to see where you're going or to defrost the screen. Heating's not a strong point on the old... Uh, no, cars, to be it? honest, they don't, none of them work that well, so you need to try and get it working as well as possible. Sure. Um, another, another point to, to bring up is that uh, that's, that's slightly different. Um, the earlier, the later cars rather, don't suffer too much with loom problems, but the the earlier cars can can do because it, it's more exposed and it's, it's earlier type wiring, so you can have problems with uh, lights and uh, some small small issues like you know going to, to the bumper, the loom, and things. So you're going to notice that because you should be having things like your lights checked. But we do see more problems with uh, you know corrosion in corrosion in in your light units and your terminals. Uh, and loom issues more so than on the later cars, but hopefully you'll be checking your lights so you know to uh, to be looking in that area. If that's an issue, it's not a bulb issue. You could have a you could have some uh, corrosion issue. Okay. But these cars is that lack of use is the this the disc the brake disc get really attacked as well. Oh, on a, a water cooled yeah, on, on a water cooled car, yeah. Okay. Yeah, do you know what? Actually, it's a very good point that you raise. Um, on most new metal, you have it outside for a couple of days. It's really um, rusty. It does. It really rusts and binds as well, and you have that horrible scraping sound. Why is that? Well, I don't know why it doesn't happen as much as this, but you used to, back in the day, you didn't have a problem with... If you get very rusty, you could drive down the road, break, and it would, um, it would clear the discs up, and the reason is is because of some sort of legislation that I think it's because ah oh, it's because of asbestos they had this, used to have asbestos in the brake pads and they and to, for them to work with the disc there's a lot of very high chromium content in the disc they've taken obviously the asbestos out to try and like protect us a lot the mechanics and and also you know I guess it's not good to have that dust flying around in the air um, but as a, as a result of the chromium coming out the discs that's now why they get so badly corroded and. The, yeah, the worst thing in the world is not using the car for a long period of time, parking outside. We have a client that leaves his car parked on the road and doesn't use it very often. Every year it comes in, he has at least one axle set changed, this and usually pads, because they've just been eating. He does no miles, but it's just the climate we have here and lack of use and the lack of and no chromium content in the, in the metal, it, it, it destroys them. I mean, have you had any problems with your... No, no, I see. No, so what I tend to do, I garage mine, um, and what I, I, I've done um, is put um, the, the car doesn't have the handbrake on when it's parked up in the garage level, and I've just. Uh, yeah, well, you garage it, it's wheels. fine, but if you're parking it on your driveway or. You notice it. I've noticed yeah. it a couple of times if I've had to do it over like a couple of nights if I'm staying somewhere else. Uh, and you hear that grinding, you just you get used to it. You drive it like a couple of hundred yards up the road, it disappears. If you keep on top of it and keep them like cleaned off by regularly taking up the road, then fine. But if they get really bad and there's no amount of braking you can do or clean them up, they just they get, the corrosion gets into it and it gets so far into the disc that you can sometimes skim them, but usually it's not really cost effective. It's, you have to change them. May as well replace it's like it's like tires, isn't it? can't really scrimp you can't scrimp on it no you need to make sure you're you know that's the most important thing isn't it your, your tires and your brakes you need to be able to stop so yeah making sure that your, your disc and pads are good and also like i keep stressing about brake pipes just because we've seen so many you know it's, it's all very well and good having like a friendly mot tester but he might not be doing you any favors um we have seen some pretty bad horror stories of cars coming in recently where they've either we have done this by applying brake pressure or it's gone in for an MOT next door and they they we, we have an MOT garage right next to our workshop they apply the brake pedal on the rollers and, and the brake pipes burst and uh, it's obviously been like that for a long time it hasn't just got like that so 
making sure they're okay because uh, you know you don't want to be going along and pushing your brake pedal and it going to the floor and you're not stopping. Chris, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. No problem. Um, what I'm going to do as well is ensure that the details to contact Chris and the rest of the crew at Right Tune are going to be below this video. So if you do have any further questions, Chris will be more than happy to speak to you in regards to that. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Sean. Let's go on. Cold, mate. Bloody cold. <laughs>just want to say a massive huge thank you to Chris at Right Tune for taking the time out to look around my car and also tell us some of the key things to remember to help us run our Porsches during the winter months. Now a lot of the advice Chris gave us isn't necessarily just for winter. Regular maintenance and checkups on your vehicle will ensure your car is running for years to come. Did this video help you? Let us know in the comments, and if it does, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and click that notification bell. I look forward to seeing you in your comments below. Take care, be safe, be good, and much love. Hey everyone, Sean from Red 11 here. As you can see, I'm in the beautiful city of Dubai, which is in the United Arab Emirates. Now you're probably thinking, am I rubbing this in your face that I'm in a hot climate while everyone else is uh, freezing cold back in the UK? Not really. You know, I do actually prefer the cold weather, believe it or not, than the hot. Ren 11's going through a bit of a change. As you know, I'm based in the UK, but believe it or not, Ren 11 is a global brand. Our biggest following is in the United States with over 25% of people on there actually liking our content on Instagram. Knowing and understanding that, we're bringing Porsche communities together from all over the world. In my personal life, I was offered a position to work in Dubai in the automotive sector. And when you have a business of that caliber and the people behind it wanting you to join, you don't hesitate. And I think it's a fantastic opportunity as well when we consider what Dubai represents and the UAE when it comes to cars and most importantly, Porsche. There will be a distinct focus in the UAE for the Porsche community. I'll also be bringing you some fantastic content globally. In 2023, you'll be sure to see us at a few events and hosting our own here in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. There'll be some great events globally, including Los Angeles, most importantly, at Goodwood for Flat Six Show Part Two, which will be in the summer next year. I just want to wish everyone who watches Ren11, follows us on Instagram, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.